Hey folks, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. This time of Armed and Dangerous. Where John Candy and Eugene Levy play security guards that get involved with this plot with these bad guys headed by Robert Loggia. You also have Meg Ryan, Jonathan Banks, Brian James, and directed by Harold. Well, Harold Ramis worked on the story and screenplay, but it was directed by Mark L. Lester, who before this had directed Commando and Class in 1984, and after this would do Showdown Low Tokyo, Class of 1999, and. What's interesting about this film is originally it was going to be a film starring John Candy and Dan Aykroyd and it was going to be directed by John Carpenter. John Carpenter himself. But then Dan Aykroyd and John Carpenter left the project. John Candy, he was sort of contractually obligated to do the film. They got Martel Lester, which I know the producer Brian Grazer who's worked with Ron Howard a lot. There was one interview where he mentioned that was a mistake, that Mark L. Lester was the wrong director for the job. And I know the film failed at the box office. It failed critically. And it seems like not a lot of people like this film. But I thoroughly enjoy this movie. I've always enjoyed this film. It's actually one of my favorite John Candy films. It would definitely be in my top five favorite John Candy flicks. Especially the ones that he starred in. <clears throat> because it's hard because you got, you know, I love Summer Rento, Stripes, which he is in, Planes, Trains, Automobiles, Uncle Buck is a fun one. Same with Great Outdoors, but this is up there. And it was cool seeing John Candy in an action comedy. And I thought Mark L. Lester did not, I thought he did a pretty decent job with it. Eugene Levy worked well with John Candy. I thought they had good chemistry. They've known each other for a while and worked on SCTV. They were in the film Going Berserk together, among other films. And they had a good rapport with each other. Nice to see a young Meg Ryan before she fucked herself up with whatever the hell plastic surgery, whatever the fuck she has nowadays. She looks, uh, I hate to say it, she looks awful nowadays because of what she did to her face. I'm like, you looked perfectly fine. You can grow. I don't care if you have wrinkles. They don't look better than fucking looking like a goddamn mannequin on acid. I'm sorry. Women should not have to do that. That's just my opinion. You, you make yourselves look worse. When you put that shit on your lips or your face. and No, you look worse, not better. Wrinkles are fine. You know, whatever when you grow old is fine. So, but yeah, Meg Ryan, I liked her as an actress. The action scenes, they're not going, going to rival Mark L. Lester's other films, whether it be Commando or Showdown Little Tokyo, but I thought they were alright considering you, know, you don't have Schwarzenegger, you don't have Dolph Lundgren and Brandon Lee, you got... John Candy and Eugene Levy. But I thought for what they had to do, it worked fine. And some nice character actors and small supporting roles. Steve Railsback has a fun role at the end as this uh, cowboy. I think he's known as the cowboy in the credits. It's like, Clim climb on in here, Slim. It's been a hoot, Slim. That was a fun little character at the end of the film. You're, what really makes the film is these two guys and their chemistry it works very well. And it goes at a very fast pace. This film is an hour and 20-some minutes. It's a very short flick. John Candy's a cop. And the first scene, he's trying to get this cute little kitty out of the tree. But he gets scared to come down. So he gets stuck. So the firemen have to bring him down. And John Candy's like, will you hurry up? You know, th this kitten's scared. <laughs> And you have a fun song, you know, armed and dangerous. 
I think it's from this band called Atlantic Star, which I've never heard of before since this one. Armed and dangerous. And like I said, it's a very short film. Without the end credits, it's probably an hour and 23 minutes. So it doesn't grows by a brisk pace. And like a lot of, maybe not by choice, but a lot of Mark L. Lester's films, Commando goes at a very fast pace. Shonen Lo Tokyo is a very short film. Granted, that's because Warner Bros. took a lot of shit out, but maybe for the better. I'd still be curious to see those deleted scenes, but back to this one. Yeah, the DVD, you're not going to have any features, and I don't even know if Mark L. Lester would talk about it. I, I would ask Mark L. Lester about this, because I'm sure no one else would. It's kind of like when John Candy was in Brewster's Millions, and that was directed by Walter Hill. And Walter Hill doesn't typically, typically do a film like Brewster's Millions, just like... This kind of a little bit off Mark L. Lester's radar. I mean, Commando and Shona Lo Toto have their humorous moments, but they're more action films, while this one's trying to be more of a comedy. But like I said, we're introduced to our two characters. After the opening credits, John Candy is framed by other cops. They make people believe that he took this TV, and he gets put off the force. Meanwhile, Eugene Levy's a really bad lawyer. And this guy freaks him out. He's like, I'm scared to death of this guy. And the judge goes, you know what, I'll put him away for a while, but you need to find another job. So, what they least to know, they both go into this training to be security guards. And these other guys tell them they have to join a union. And not only do you have Jonathan Banks, who's been in films like 48 Hours, or many others... Brian James, who was also in 48 Hours, and may he rest in peace. Brian James been a lot of stuff. The Horror Show, and Tango and Cash, and also Zeus, Tiny Lister Jr., who was in Friday, and No Holds Bar with Hulk Hogan as Zeus. And the three of them tell him to join a union. They don't want to, but they force them to. Med Ryan is sort of the daughter of the guy who heads the security group that hires John Candy and Eugene Levy. You have some fun stuff when they're training. Med Ryan is showing all the cadets how to shoot. And she's like, do not fire till I have left the target area, okay? And I thought she was really cute in the film. Fun stuff where these guys firing shots Eugene Levy can't hit. Uh, one guy is like cussing up a storm. He's like, I can't do it justice. One guy's firing in the air. They pass. Eugene Levy and John Candy is joined by them as partners, and they're at this pharmaceutical company after hours. And they check in with Tiny Lister Jr. And it's fun, you know, seeing John Candy in this kind of role where he's the tough guy. Usually playing it straight and muff it off to someone like Tiny Lister Jr. John Candy going, duh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Being a smart ass, the Zeus. I'm like, holy shit, John Candy's got balls of steel. And yeah, some stuff happens. Bad guys try to take some stuff via ski mask, and Eugene Levy finds them and gets chased. John Candy arrives to help and goes, freeze. They turn around with these submachine guns and John Candy goes, holy shit. <laughs> That's the way. Uh, Eugene Levy's chased by dogs, which Candy stops them. And I thought this was also pretty funny that he stops the dogs. John Candy like bites one right on the snout and like punches another dog. <laughs> Ideas like John Candy is character. He's not a, he's not a buffoon. He's... Actually, a pretty tough guy. But he still has a humor that works and fits well with the flick. And both these guys try to dissent information what's going on. Because even after all that, they get fined $100. They get in trouble when they did everything they could. And 
they get put on garbage detail and then toxic waste detail and like these other poor guys just lost this tooth today and you know, we've been here just for three weeks and John and Eugene Levy get scared and <laughs> they put some do this when they're on the toxic waste and they need to get some answers they go to Tiny Lister Jr. They get chased around by this muscled woman in this fitness club and they find Zeus and they choke him, Candy chokes him out and makes Eugene Levy hold these weights and he's barely holding them and they're ready to smash Zeus's head in. They're able to get info. When they get the info, they run out and John Teddy even has to punch the muscled woman out. Um, he did a fun scene with Tony Burton. May he rest in peace, who was in the Rocky films as Apollo's trainer and then Rocky's trainer when you down to Rocky IV and and such. And Rocky Balboa. He's a guy who gives info to John Candy, but he's also fishing. And John Candy has the fishing pole, gets it from Tony Burton, and all of a sudden there's a fucking shark on the other end. It's like, yeah, I'm away, there's a shark. And he's like pushing all the fishermen away. Yeah, I'm away, this thing's heavy. And he takes out his gun, just bam, 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 shoots the fucking shark. And then even poses pictures with the shark that he caught and has all these poses with his gun. Like this. Um, I thought it's a fairly funny movie, brisk pace, entertaining with a good cast. That's why I like the film. And at least to John Candy, Eugene Levy, taking these two other girls and going to Robert Loja's party. And Robert Loja's sort of a uh, main bad guy. They try to get some info. The two of them hide in the steam room. Uh, James Tolkien, who was in the Back to the Future films as the principal. He was also in Masters of the Universe as a cop. He's got a bald head. Likes to call people a slacker in Back to the Future. He's in this as a guy who's worked with Robert Loja and he gets shot and killed. There's a little shootout, a little car chase, and pretty much these two guys are chased into an adult bookstore. Which actually surprised me. This is still PG 13, but it's 80s PG 13. They did chase in an adult bookstore and they have to ultimately knock these people out and steal their stuff and so they have to look like this to sort of get out of the store. And before that I thought it was a fun little scene where they go into again this is a PG-13 movie so that surprised me watching it again but one of those peep shows and John Tandy's like give me a quarter Eugene Levy's like are you kidding me? Come on it helps me think. <laughs> and he puts it in and he watches and then the door closed down, and then they both look at each other. Then Eugene like, okay, fine, I'll put another quarter in. Then they both sit down, and it goes down again. Then the third time, John Tane's like, give, give me a quarter. <laughs> Gets around from Eugene Levy one more time. And that's when they get some people in and knock them out to take their clothes and get by, get by some folks to escape and meet up with Meg Ryan. It pretty much the plot, the bad guys are going to hit this armored car and rob the pen pension funds. So John Candy gears up. Uh, Eugene Levy's going to be driving the truck and John Candy's going to meet up with them. And While Eugene Levy and Meg Ryan are driving the armored truck and defusing the bad guy's plan. And John Candy's going to get there with his guns a-blazing to stop the bad guys. But his motorcycle won't work right. And it breaks. He tries to get someone to help him with cars. This woman rolls the windows up and squeezes his arms on the windows. These assholes in this monster truck throw beer cans in his face so he takes a knife and just <laughs> deflates one of their big ass wheels. Meanwhile, Eugene Levy, he's doing well with the armored car, pushing bad guys and other cars left and right. And John Candy finally gets help from Steve Reels back from who was in Life Force, and he was in... He's been in quite a few films, Steve Rails back. 
uh, was it Helter Skelter? I can't remember the name of the movie. But he's a good character actor who has a cowboy hat. And he helps him out. You climb on in your slim. Let's see how fast this son bitch will go. And Born to be Wild, the song is playing. And he's just pushing all this cars out with his semi truck through traffic. And John Candy is having a ball. And he's carrying this 50 caliber handgun. They get there in time, and him and Steve Railsbeb move the semi to save, take this fucking bazooka blast, this rocket from the bad guys to save Eugene Levy and Meg Ryan, and blows their tanker part of the semi up. And uh, apparently, it's carrying rocket fuel because it also fucks up these dirty cops and their car. And this ice cream truck, the one that shot the bazooka in the first place. Um, but John Candy and Steve Railsback are okay. And Brian James and Jonathan Banks are in a car. And John Candy takes his 50 caliber gun and shoots the shit out of the car and flips it over. Very, very nice stunt because there's a guy who's John Candy's stunt double. He moves right out of the way as the car flips. And it seemed like he was just this close. You see a guy move, and then the car flips right by him. Being that close is very dangerous, but I commend the stunt guy for doing that. And for his troubles, he gives the gun to Steve Rails back, who's excited. He's like, it's been a hoot, Slim. <laughs> I mean, this is a guy who's in the film for probably a minute or two, but he makes an impression, which is fun to see in movies like this. Uh, Steve Steve Reels back is one of them, and pretty much John Candy is back to the, he's rehired as a cop, and he tells him, "Oh yeah, he wants to be a cop too." And Eugene Levy's like, "No, no, why you tell him I was going to be a cop? Because you are going to be a cop. Okay, you don't be a good cop." And because the film bombed so much and no one really liked the flick, there was no sequel or anything. But I would like I would like to have seen a sequel of these two guys, this time as cops, and what they could have done. And with the sequel, maybe make the action scenes a little bit more involved, a little bit more bigger, a little bit more... Um, I mean, it's not like the action scenes are the most fantastic or the most memorable, but they, you know, they serve the film fine. But if you go into this for action, it's kind of the wrong reason. Go into this for the comedy, and uh, it works out fine. And I've said before, I say again, it's because the, the cast works well, especially these two guys. You know, I thought they worked very well together. Nice to see John Candy in this kind of role. And again, he wasn't just a buffoon cop, he was actually a fairly decent cop. Nice, recognizable faces, like, oh, cool, there's. Tiny Lister Jr., cool, there's James Tolkien, the guy from Back to the Future. Oh, cool, there's Robert Loggia, who's on Independence Day, among many other films. It's, that was cool to see. Entertaining film, fairly funny, fast-paced. I think this is a good one. And it's a film really no one talks about when they talk about John Candy. I mean, not many people talk about John Candy nowadays anyway, but when they do, they talk about Uncle Buck, which is a great one. They talk about Place Trades Automobiles, which is a great one. Maybe his big parts in films like Home Alone or National Lampoon's Vacation or supporting role in Stripes, but yeah, this one doesn't really get on a lot of people's radar, but it's, I think, a very fun 80s action comedy. You know, it, it's an underrated film. I would call this an underrated flick. It's a fairly good one. Again, I, I always... I saw this a lot of times growing up. I would, thought it was one of my favorite John Candy flicks. And definitely one of his more underrated ones. So, thanks for watching my thoughts on Armed and Dangerous. And stay tuned for more videos for the John Candy Marathon. Later.